With the Insta360 X4, you can record 360 video in 8K resolution, but in doing so, the camera gets pretty hot. So much so that you will be typically limited to about one hour of recording time before the camera shuts down to prevent overheating. But there may just be a way of recording in 360 8K for many, many hours, basically until you fill up your memory card. How does it work? Will it work? Well, let's find out. So this is a follow-up to a couple of videos that I posted recently concerning battery life and overheating on the Insta360 X4. Now, based on my testing, if you record in the 5.7K resolution, you can record for over two hours on a single charge, and if you plug into an external power source, whether it's AC power or a power bank, you can basically record indefinitely until your memory card is full. Now, if you are recording in 8K resolution, it's a little more complicated. Now, in theory, the battery will give you around about 75 minutes of recording time in 8K, but there is a good chance, probably around 50-50, that it will overheat before you actually deplete the battery. And if you are plugged into an external power source, the situation is even worse, because now you have the combined heat from the camera recording at 8K, as well as the heat of the battery being charged at the same time. So in my testing, when recording in 8K, plugged into an external power source, the best I could get was around about 54 minutes. But there is another option that we might want to look at when plugged into an external power source, and that is removing the battery. So that is what we're going to be testing today. I'm gonna to plug into an external power source with an empty 512 gigabyte memory card and see exactly how long we are able to record for. So it's going to be a fairly short video today, but I'll still place the chapters up here so you can skip to whatever section most interests you. But before we get started, I do want to emphasize, as usual, that this video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased all of the equipment with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. And of course, if you enjoy the video, get good information out of it, remember to give us a like, and consider subscribing to our channel. So, let's get on with some testing. Okay, here is my familiar test setup. I have the camera set up, filming itself in the mirror with the clock, of course, just for fun. And we're going to see just how long we can record for. Now, I have done similar tests previously. I'm recording in 8K, 30 frames per second. And I did this previously with the battery installed and also being plugged into external power. In that instance, we were able to get less than one hour of recording time before the camera overheated and shut down. So the question is now, having removed the battery, now I have it on external power only with the battery removed. Hopefully that will also improve the airflow around the camera, and we are hoping to record for much longer. Now I have a 512 gigabyte card installed in the camera, which is completely empty. And according to the display, I should be able to get over five hours worth of recording time at 8K. And so let's go ahead and when the clock reaches exactly 12 o'clock, we're going to start the recording and basically leave it to see how long we can record for. And 12 o'clock. Now, okay, let's see how long we get. So a successful first test, we were basically able to record in 8K until we ran out of available memory. 
and here you can see the resulting file in the Insta360 Studio. We have almost 500 gigabytes of data and a recording of over five hours in duration. Now I did monitor the surface temperature periodically throughout this test, similar to what I did in my previous video, and I did see surface temperatures approaching 150 degrees Fahrenheit, so we were probably pretty close to overheating, but in this particular test, we were successfully able to fill up the memory card without overheating. If I had a one terabyte card, perhaps we could have continued recording for another five hours, but I do think we were pretty close to that overheating point in this case. So overall, a successful test, but before we get too excited, let me just give you the conditions of this test. This first test was performed in a basement bathroom at an ambient temperature of around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. Now, there was minimal airflow, but these are still fairly cool conditions. So I decided it would be a good idea to repeat the test. I took my test setup to my garage where the ambient temperature was around about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, around about 26 degrees Celsius. And I repeated the test initially with minimal airflow. And unfortunately, the camera did not do as well in these conditions. We managed to get just 37 minutes of recording time before the camera shut down due to overheating. So for the next test, I decided to introduce some airflow. Now, the only fan that I had on hand was a pretty powerful fan, but I set it up in a way to provide just gentle airflow going past the camera. And this test turned out to be very successful, actually even more so than the original test. At around 80 degrees Fahrenheit with just gentle airflow, we were able to record for the full five hours and fill up the memory card just as we saw earlier. But in this instance, when I measured the temperature on the surface of the camera, the hottest it got was around about 137 Fahrenheit, and it stabilized at around about 135 for most of the test. So under these conditions, I would say that with a one terabyte card, you could easily expect to go the full 10 hours. So with this test being so successful, I thought, let's go for one more test. So for the final test then, I decided let's reinsert the battery again while plugged into external power and repeat the same test with airflow going over the camera. Now, as a reminder, when I tried this test in my previous video, it was in cooler conditions, around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but with no airflow. And in those tests, the best I could get was about an hour's worth of recording. But the good news here is that at 80 degree temperatures, with just a little bit of airflow going across the camera, we were able once again to complete the full five hours of recording, filling up the memory card. And here too, even with the battery inserted, the surface temperature on the camera maxed out at around about 137 Fahrenheit. So once again, I would be confident to continue with a one terabyte card to record for 10 hours and even more. So what did we learn from our testing? Well, in order to record for extended periods on your X4, obviously you need to be plugged into some kind of external power. Your next problem, of course, is to avoid overheating. And removing the battery does give you a small benefit, but really it's only going to be an effective solution if your ambient temperature is fairly low, 70 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, and even then you're going to get close to that overheating point. Clearly the most effective way to avoid overheating is airflow. And you don't need to blast a high speed fan at your camera, just ensuring a gentle airflow across the surface of the camera will help enormously in bringing down the temperature. If this is something you plan on using a lot, you probably should invest in one of these, an infrared surface thermometer. This will allow you to check the surface temperature of the camera and perhaps increase the airflow as needed. 
In my testing, I have found that if you measure the temperature somewhere around here between the logo and the status light, this is the hottest point that it gets on the surface of the camera. And one final thing to mention here is to make sure you are using a suitable memory card. Now this may sound a little strange, but if your memory card lacks the required speed and struggles to keep up with the writing during the recording process, it will also contribute to more heat generation. Now, if you want more information on this, I did an entire video focused on this, so check that out on the channel also. But for today's tests, I was using a Samsung Pro Plus 512 gigabyte card, but I've also had great experience with Lexar Silver Series cards and the SanDisk Extreme cards, and I will also place links to those in the video description. So that wraps it up for today. Some interesting and frankly unexpected results. I hope you got some good information out of today's video. If so, remember to give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments, any questions, if you have suggestions for future videos, please go ahead and put those into the comments section. Otherwise, thanks again for watching.